Time taking it to the OG now with the pizza margarita. Gonna show you how I do it in the Unicoda 16. Calling it the OG this time because if you've seen some of my other videos, oftentimes I'm calling it like a fake margarita. That's because I'm using maybe some aged mozz or some other cheeses in the mix. A pizza margarita, there is an actual definition for this regulated DOP style. I mean, those guys aren't gonna be coming knocking at your door, but you know, respect the craft. But that starts off with, I mean, a pizza margarita, what is that? You got your dough. Typically, it's uh, you can either do sourdough or yeast raised for the OG Naples style. That's typically a one-day ferment. I got a three-day ferment going here. But then that gets hit with just a very simple tomato sauce. Typically, just tomatoes crushed in salt. That's it. Fresh mozzarella, either buffalo or cow's milk. I got cow's milk today. Finished with some um, olive oil and, of course, the basil. The basil... OG, maybe there's some debate on this, it goes in before the bake. If you're gonna choose one, I think that's the way to go. It really perfumes the pizza up and you get that basil smell and the basil into the sauce. And maybe hit it with some basil afterwards. You know, do what you love. Let's get this thing fired up. I got this thing, I'm, I'm at like, you know, mid 800s. I got the Uni Coda 16, about halfway cranked up. It's been heating up 30, 35 minutes. Let's make this pizza. It's pizza margarita time. The classics, one of my favorites, a simple cheese pizza, the OG style, showing you my meese, my pizza station setup for breaking one of these pies. I got my naturally fermented dough ball. This is sourdough. This is not the super OG because I am using organic USA flour, grown in the USA flour for this one. Um, typically it's the Caputo Italian. That stuff is bomb too. Use what you like. I got that along with tomato sauce. This is just California grown tomatoes. So that makes it again, not super OG, but we're stretching it. The, the Really the essence of this pie is, I mean, the, you always hear the legend of this was a pie for Queen Margarita, something like that. Really probably more, they're pulling from what was around them. They had, you know, you got up on Vesuvius there, the tomatoes, the fresh mozzarella. Somebody just kind of figured out, put that on some dough, fire it in a really hot oven, and it's super bomb. So we're kind of keeping it legit like that, saying local. I'm using the California grown organic Bianco di Napoli. Use what you like, whatever you have local. I just blend them up super simple with just some salt. Recipes up on my blog, SantaBarbaraBaker.com. Got the OG heady basil homegrown if you can do it it's a pretty simple plant to grow i recommend it and you just want the leaves off of them i like using some of the fatties that's what we got today got some fresh moths these are just the little guys i i like this size you can just break them in half put them on the pizza and they don't put out a lot of water the best is making your own it can be some work you got to get the fresh curds it's not that hard though if you can do that that's the best it's gonna you can control the moisture content a little better on that so it doesn't gush a bunch of water into your pizza I always look for this one. This is a local one that I can get here in Santa Barbara. It doesn't put a lot of moisture on the pie. I really like that and the size is right. Got my olive oil, California grown. We're keeping it OG Cali style today. And then just some dusting flour. This is just bread flour I'm using uh, to, to keep uh, the pizza from sticking. Let's build this thing. So if you've seen traditional pizza margarita in Naples, if you had the chance or something like that, they move really fast. I think that's a key idea or you know, something to keep in mind when you're making a pizza margarita. You want to work quickly, so that's making sure everything's set up. You don't want this thing hanging out on your work surface for too long, it'll stick. Oftentimes, doughs are maybe a little high in fermentation, maybe root, you know, it's a little bit sticky, so let's try and move fast. Make it all sure, make sure it's all set up. Got the dough ready. This is, uh, this is 300 grams. I shoot typically 275 to 300. In this new oven, I'm expanding. I'm going a little bit bigger because I want to make a little bit bigger pies. There's some room in here. And also, too, on the inside, I do a little more like thin and crispy style. I, I overstretch them. I feel like there's a little more wiggle room. And here, it's like, I don't know, the dough, like, I, I, I'm just playing it a little careful, going with a bigger ball. That is one thing that you can do. You have a little more room when you're using that bigger side. I still think, though, between 275 to 300, for 12 to 13 inch pizza is bomb. Let's get this thing out. So I just dusted it with a little flour. You can use something like a scraper or something. I usually keep it in, in a bowl. I mean, at home, if you're just making a few dough balls, it's not that big a deal. And just put this, I just go straight into the, into the dusting flour here because I don't actually dust directly onto my surface. I'm putting out another video, kind of going more detail into my whole shaping process, but we're just gonna try and get this thing going fast. I start always keeping the, the, you know, you probably don't want to get that much flour in it, not that big a deal. Bottoms up, the, the, what's going to be the top is right on the marble right now. I'm going to begin by working the bottom. 
We're just gonna go quickly. This does temper. I like having the dough at room temperature. That way when it hits the deck, it cooks really quick and there's no unbaked spots. And you know, you can stretch how you like. There's tons of different ways. I start by just kind of going around building the crust, trying to keep it pretty even, keeping that center intact. So, cause if you overstretch, you, you can have, definitely have a bad day. You can't take that back. So always under stretch. You can give it another stretch once you get it on the peel. I'm gonna hit it with some flour on the bottom here. Flip it over. Let's get this thing going even faster. All right, working it, building that crust. You know, it could be more even. And it, there's a whole different styles. I can pick it up like this. Since it's room temperature, it's stretching pretty fast. I was gonna give it, you know, a couple spins, stretch it looking. We're shooting for about a 12 inch pizza maybe on this one. Clear out some of the flour here. Get this down, that's the top, bottom. Get it, again, what's gonna be the top is going directly onto the work surface, onto the marble. I kinda goobed it there, there's a, like a little pinch there. Like that can be a problem, that, that might stick. So we'll keep an eye on that. I'm hitting the bottom with the flour, and you know, you want to use just the right amount. That's the secret because you don't want a bunch of uncooked flour on your dough, but you also don't want it sticking. But I just give it a nice little gen and make sure I'm getting all those, trying to get those air bubbles out. Cause if you ever see sometimes they'll pop up giving you just like a, just too big a bubble on the bottom. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't know, flip it over, clear the, clear the marble of most of the flour, shake that thing off, get it down, get it. Let's get it rounded off again. Let's see it. Ch checking for any bubbles in there. Oh, it looks pretty good. I'm getting the excess flour off of there. All right. This is another spot you can stretch. Like, oh man, this is looking pretty thin, but I like it like that. All right. Let's get this thing dressed up. Here's the tomato sauce. It's just simply tomatoes seasoned with some salt. I'm using a three ounce ladle here. I like to do, you know, three, maybe a little bit over. Sometimes if you see the, the traditional margarita, there's actually quite a bit of tomato sauce on them, actually. It can be a little soupy, but uh, you know, just make it how you like it. You do want to put enough on there to keep that dough down. You see, you don't want like, huge bubbles popping up in the middle of it. Next, I go next with the basil, got the fatties. I, I try to keep it, you know, you want a little bit in each bite, but these big fat ones, oh look, there's a little one hanging out. We'll put that one in the center. And then that's it, hitting it with the cheese. I break these in half starting on the, the rim. I, I feel like the best way is to build your pizza from the outside in. And I think a lot of people when you're first starting out are going too heavy in the center. You wanna put most of the stuff actually out towards the edge. That's where your dough's the strongest. All right, get that. And then I'll just throw one in the center and then do another ring around this, on the inside here, alternating maybe a little bit on the basil there. Getting this all cheesed up. This is just some local um, cow's milk mozzarella. That looks pretty good to me. All right, making sure. Oh, look at that important thing here. I'm throwing a little flour down because it looks like I dripped some water from that mozz on there, the fresh mozz, and that'll stick when you're getting on the peel. All right, this thing, it looks like it's already maybe sticking, so let's get this off the marble really quick and hit it with the olive oil and get this thing into the oven. Going pretty generous, all right. Pizza time, let's get this thing loaded up. I'm just picking it up right on from the marble onto, I use an uni peel, this is the 14 inch one. It's the one last final chance to stretch right here on the peel. Be very careful, either try and get your hands underneath or just kind of poke at the edges. You do not want to get any sauce or anything. That uh, looks pretty good to me. Let's get this really quick, get it into the oven. I'm loading the back right corner here. A little rough getting off the peel, maybe a little sticky. Well, let's, but we got pizza in the oven. Let's bake this thing. <clears throat> About 30 seconds in right here. I load this and I'm using an Uni Coda 16. I put it on this like back right corner. The oven felt really hot. I was checking it with my gun. I just didn't want this one to burn. I was a little sketch on it. We're about almost 45 seconds in, no turn yet. You wanna make sure the sets, I'm a little sketch, it's really close to the edge. If you go in there too early, you might rip it. If you're having a bad day, that's a refire. So just keep an eye, don't wanna burn it either. I'm seeing some color, some bubbles on that side. See how this thing bakes up? Almost probably ready for the turn. A little over a minute. I'm going a little longer bake on this one, I decided. Bubbling up really good on the back. I'm gonna start just kind of peeping underneath here. Like you can see like, oh yeah, that's still pretty raw, but the back's looking good. Like I wanna turn it. 
I think I'm just going to start trying to get in there. Oh, that's looking sketchy. Let's go a little bit longer. Up to almost 130 now. I'm going to come in from this side. It looks pretty good, making sure I'm getting underneath there. Gently picking this thing up. I don't have one of the fancy terrain peels. I'm just using, this is the 12-inch the perforated from Uni just to turn this thing. All right, looking pretty good. Going to kind of adjust this. You want to be real careful. That piece is really hot when you're pulling up to do those turn shenanigans. Watch, don't pop your bubbles either. You want that nice look. Baking up pretty good. Maybe a little brown on the edges there. Still learning, you know, exactly where the good spots are in here. That's what's sweet about this thing. There's room that you can kind of work this thing more like a wood-fired oven. All right, gonna give it a little more, a little turn. See, there you can go. You don't even have to get your hands on it if you got, if you got to figure out some little techniques. Ah, oh, look at that, bubbling up pretty good. I made another pizza earlier that had a little more leopardy than I liked, but I thought the oven was just too hot. So we cranked it down, it's all the way down now, baking up, we're at 223. This is kind of a long bake. Looking pretty good though, peep underneath there. Oh yeah, getting some set on the crust, looking headies. See this thing one more turn. Look at that, looking pretty good, not burnt. That's what I like. Sometimes you can get those big bubbles, but if they're burnt, they don't taste that good. Oh God, this thing's almost there. The base will burn a little bit, but again, that perfume smell pretty good. That's when you can maybe hit it with the freshies at the end. This thing's looking pretty good. Don't want to burn it. Bubbling up. Getting here. We're up three minutes. I bet. I think I'm going to hit it maybe about four. So, like I was saying, we were claiming OG Mark. This is borderline fake mark, but we got the right ingredients more or less on there, and it's going to be really good. Use local. Use the best you can find. Connect the dots between your farmer and your pizza. The words of Chris Bianco, good stuff. Oh, looking like we're almost burning there, see? That's a little bit too much. Just make sure that set, the crust is set, the rest of the pie looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna pull this thing out. We're at 336. Put this over here, and you can move kind of this back right spot to let things finish off. Just make sure you keep an eye on your crust here, because look at that, a little bit dark. See, I pulled it out kind of because I was feeling that part burning. Kind of rested on the edge there. Let's pull this thing. I think it's done. All right, look at that. OG Marg, you know, using the California tomatoes, the home G, homegrown OG basil, putting this thing onto a rack. I like to always cool on a rack for a little bit. Let that crust set. Don't want it totally soupy, just a big pile of water on your pizza. That helps set that crust because I like a little bit crispy. Let this thing set, slice it up, and we'll give this pizza a taste. Looking pretty good. The OG margarita showing you how I make my margaritas. Like I said, we're, we're approaching the OG on this one, but I hit it with, I got the California grown tomatoes, the backyard basil, organic flour grown in the USA. You know, I like to keep it like that sometimes, and the California olive oil. This looks pretty good. The bake, I'd say overall, this was not my favorite one, but I do like the looks of it. It's a little dark on this side. I think maybe I could have used a turn. You know, sometimes you just got to figure out that oven, the balance of making sure that crust sets before you hit it with a turn, because if you rip it, game over, having a bad time. But you know, this color over here, I would have liked to see a little more leopardy. And I had more leopardy on my, on, I made a pizza earlier that boom, bomb, look like, what is that guy with the pin, pin faces, everything gnarly. But this one looks pretty good. This is like a good pizza. Not burnt, good. Let's give this thing a try. I'm gonna go, let's go with this one. The fat base, look at that. I love that. A pickup like this, like, you know, this is what I'm saying, changing up your flour maybe a little bit so you get a pizza that you really like, regardless if it's DOP or not. Make a mark, it's one of the best pizzas of all time. I love that it's gonna hold up like this big time. Three and a half minutes, almost four. Let's give it a try, look at that. Mmm, really tasty. That tomato sauce, so fresh and bright. In an oven like this, it cooks up real fast and nice, keeping the integrity of that cheese, keeping the integrity of the tomato sauce, that basil. Like I said, I put it on there. Typically, pre-bake, it perfumes everything. Get that basil essence everywhere. I didn't hit this one with a little basil afterwards, but that's a that's a that's definitely a solid choice. Anyway, this one's looking pretty good. I can't wait to finish. The bottom looks really good. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this, making some pizza margaritas wherever you are. Keep tuning in. I got more pizza content on the way, including dough. Get my dough dialed so I can share it with all of you. Keep making pizza. One love. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you all of you. Everybody out there, one love. Eat pizza. So bomb.